we will begin Pichu Brothers and Party Panic from start to finish to the music within the game itself. All of the illustrations are done by Demo Reel. And for the most part, the described video was done by me. With some help, of course, from the wiki. And also watching the thing myself so I know that everything is indeed correct. Okay. Let's begin. Part 1. The story opens with a view of a big city at night. We zoom in to show Meowth alongside Wobbuffet, Cubone, and Three Squirtle standing atop of a building. I've waited a long time for this, guys, said Meowth. And in just 24 hours from now, Meowth's dream is finally gonna come true! Meowth then thrusted up crescent moon-shaped cards with fruit outlines in them, capturing the image of the real crescent moon within the paper moon. From there, the title music begins, side by side, Pichu and Pichu. As the Pichu brothers are seen running around the town, climbing a lamppost, jumping off, then resuming their adventure through the town. Next we have Smoochum, who is admiring herself through the reflection in the window. Oops. When she spots some Pokemon, a Hitmonlee, Lediba, Sunflora, Psyduck, Delibird, Zatu, Magneton, and Elekid, carrying some crescent moon-shaped cards. Smoochum runs off. We are introduced to Teddy Ursa. Teddy Ursa is stuffing its face full of acorns inside of a hole in a tree, hiding them in its cheeks. When it tries to get out of the tree, its face gets stuck. With a bit of struggling, it's able to free itself and goes tumbling down to the ground, landing on its head. Then we jump to our next character, Magby, who's playing around exposed pipes, dodging all the blasts of water coming from them. After a bit of gymnastics, we are introduced to our final character, Wooper, who was jumping into a river and started swimming happily, bouncing in and out of the water. Now that the gang has been introduced, we turn to meet up at the Pichu's Pokemon Clubhouse. Pichu brothers come running along with their friends, Magby, Teddy Ursa, and Wooper. The narrator begins, Well, it seems like the Pichu brothers and their friends are ready for another day of fun at their Pokemon Clubhouse. Smoochum is running towards the group frantically. Uh-oh, sounds like Smoochum's got a problem. Smoochum starts explaining what she had saw. Smoochum's all excited. Pokemon are carrying little cards, and they're shaped like a crescent moon. Big Brother Pichu imagined the crescent moon crushing him and his brother. He then gets an idea to see for themselves, and they run off. This sounds very interesting, so the other Pokemon want to see for themselves. They stand atop a building and look down at the other Pokemon. A Magmar and a Weeping Bell walk by, carrying the cards. Soon after them, a Lediba flies by, also holding one of the cards. Teddy Ursa takes notice of the fruit-shaped cutout within the card and begins to imagine all the different fruit shapes in the middle. The gang finds himself walking through a park, trying to figure out what's happening. This is a real mystery, so the gang heads for the park to figure out what the Crescent Moons might be. They notice an Apom and a Smeargle playing with their cards. There's an Apom and a Smeargle. Maybe they can give the gang some answers. The gang runs over to the pair and starts demanding answers. The Pichu brothers and their friends want to know what's up with the Crescent Moons. Apom obliges and grabs Smeargle's tail to begin drawing onto the wall behind them. Big Brother Pichu is quick to identify the images as fruit but is interrupted by Teddy Ursa, who came to the same conclusion before he could speak. The moons have something to do with fruit, but where do they find it? Apom once again takes up the tail and draws one last picture. Something that looks like a clock. The gang is stumped. They begin thinking hard about what this image could mean. Magby recognized the drawing, and it leads the posse to a large building. The narrator began. Apom's painting pointed our friends in the right direction, and it's time to do some exploring. With the help of Teddy Ursa's nose, they find themselves inside of an old warehouse. Hmm, 
It looks like an empty old warehouse, but maybe Teddy Ursa's nose knows something we don't. Once more, Teddy Ursa sniffs the air and soon finds a large supply of fruit stowed away. The gang runs towards the fruit, only to be stopped by the three harmonizing squirtles. The Pichu brothers are explaining that Apom sent them. Cubone shows up and explains to the group what the crescent shaped cards are. So that's it! The crescent shaped cards are invitations to Meow's party, and that fruit is reserved for invited guests only. The three Squirtle and the Cubone proceed to kick the Pichu Posse out. However, Teddy Urso is able to get away. Until Wobbuffet stepped in. The gang is thrown out of the building. Meowth then shows up yelling, Hey! What are y'all doing here? You're supposed to be upstairs getting everything ready so we can rehearse the song we're playing at the party! Elsewhere, the Pichu group is sitting on some stairs feeling sad while looking up at the sky. Too bad. No invitation, no party. Suddenly, an invitation flies across from the wind. Look! There's hope! The gang then starts to chase after the invitation. Back at the big building, Meowth decides to check on the preparations. Is everything ready for the big party? Meowth started, before shrieking. Gah! Little progress has been made, with all three Squirtle working together to move only a single stool. What are you doing? shouted Meowth. I seen slow bro that move faster than you, Tree! We gotta rehearse for our song! Come on, move it! Some loud banging is heard close by. It's Cubone, hitting some metal drums and trash cans as a makeshift drum kit. The practice is nothing more than wailing on every item nearby. When Meowth snaps, Cut it out, you little numbskull! Shouts Meowth. Or I'll throw you out of the band! The harsh words hurt and upset Cubone. To which Meowth takes quick notice to. Gah! What do I do? Without Cubone, I got no drummer. Meowth realizes the issue at hand attempts to cons and attempts to console Cubone. I didn't mean it, buddy. We gotta have a talented percussionist like you in the band. Cubone turns away, but Meowth continues. You don't have to help the Squirtle. You can just go right ahead and play. Cubone turns his head back and Meowth finishes. Anything that makes you happy makes me happy. Cubone springs to life once more and continues to bang on the false drum, drum kit the same way it had been doing before. Meowth then utters to himself, Yeah, too bad my ears are miserable. We begin right away with the Pichu Posse chasing the invitation, blowing away in the wind. While chasing, Smoochum stops to admire herself in a store of window reflection. The invitation flies over a river causing the brothers and Teddy Ursa to head over to the nearby bridge to continue the chase. Wooper, however, decides to jump straight into the water. Magby, unaware of what was up ahead, accidentally falls into the river. Magby starts panicking when Wooper pops out from below, lifting Magby out of the water. Back to the chase. Teddy Ursa starts to become tired when his nose picks up the scent of a nearby ice cream truck, prompting him to run towards the truck and forgetting about the invitation. The crescent moon continues to fly through the town, with only the Pichu brothers themselves giving chase. The Pichu brothers hop over a car and right on top of Houndour's head. Angrily, Houndour begins chasing after the brothers. Meanwhile, Switchum is out looking for her friends when she bumps into an outside upset Oddish. The Pichu brothers are no longer chasing the moon, and instead are fleeing from a now grumpy Houndour. While running, the younger brother notices a small hole along the fence, and the brothers use it to escape. Houndour's attempts to follow, attempts to follow, but cannot fit through the hole. But this doesn't stop Houndour's pursuit. He then looks for a way around. The Pichu brothers end up running past a sign showing a pile of swine and an assortment of pylons, a brown cloth, and a bucket. The older brother takes notice and drags his sibling back towards the items with an idea in mind. Houndour finally catches up, when it notices a strange looking pile of swine. It's fur made of brown cloth, two pylons posing as its tusks, and a bucket sitting atop the pylons acting as the Pokemon's nose. Houndour becomes suspicious and begins to investigate. The brothers get nervous and try to move the disguise away. Houndour is now very suspicious, 
and it puts its paw down on the loose cloth, revealing the disguise and causing the chase to begin anew. The Pichu brothers run into a car park and make it inside an elevator, in time to escape from Houndour. The brothers breathe a sigh of relief. Phew! The Pichu brothers are safe from Houndour, and things are finally looking up! The elevator reaches the top floor, so the two Pichu run forward to admire the view, until they look down at the road below. The height is so dizzying that the pair fall over backwards safely on- safely! onto the ledge of the building they were looking down from. Now gazing up at the sky, the brothers take notice of the clouds, seeing the shape of themselves, laughing and having fun. They then take notice of some other clouds that look very much like fruit, reminding them how hungry they are and what they were running for in the first place. By a stroke of luck, a gust of wind blows the rogue invitation right into the face of the younger Pichu. Happy to have their invitation, the Pichu brothers head back down the elevator and exit the building, only to come face to face with an unhappy hound hour. Thus, the chase begins once more. They end up being chased downhill, with a fire hydrant coming into view. The older brother takes notice, informs his brother to split before they collide. Hound hour, blinded in its anger, fails to notice the hydrant and cannot slow down in time causing the Pokémon to perform a spectacular headbutt onto the object. The hydrant is broken, and the loose water propels the Cranky Houndour far away. The Peachy Brothers are now in the clear, and they happily begin their journey back to the clubhouse to inform their friends of the good news. However, this isn't the end of the park. Houndour finally lands in a different part of town, having its fall broken by the belly of a Snorlax. It lands next to the, it lands next to the Sleeping Giant. Houndour, dazed from the whole ordeal, realizes where it's sitting, as Snorlax begins to roll over onto its stomach towards him. Houndour tries to get away, but is ultimately crushed by the unignorable girth of the sleeping Snorlax. Meowth and his friends have finally finished setting up for the party. Well, we're ready to party, Meowth said. Cubone is thrilled and begins hopping in place, but in its excitement, falls onto some tables. Hey! shouted Meowth. You don't be bonehead, ya! Die! Meowth realizes what he said too late, and now Cubone has fallen into gloom again. Wait! It isn't your fault, pal! No harm done! Meowth hurriedly began. There's no reason to get all gloom, little buddy. I'll get those other clowns to clean this up. Don't you worry. This did the trick. Cubone is back to its excited old self once more. Relieved, Meowth, start Meowth started. Phew! All right, let's get this place ready to party! The Squirtle Trio then used excellent teamwork to pick up a single plate, prompting Meowth to scream, We don't got much time! Hooray! Exhausted, Meowth mutters to himself, Oh, they're scarier than Pikachu! The Pichu brothers return to the clubhouse, where they find Magby, Wooper, and Teddy Ursa waiting after they lost the Trail of the Moon. The younger brother of the duo then holds up the newly acquired invitation, to which the gang cheers, until Smoochum approaches with a sad oddish with her. Smoochum says this oddish is sad, because its invitation to Meow's big party blew away. The brothers are now aware that the invitation they have and the invitation lost by this oddish are one and the same. The older brother is prepared to do the right thing, but the younger brother is hesitant to hand it over. After a verbal push from the older brother, the younger brother hands the Crescent Moon over to the Oddish. Oddish happily... Oddish accepts and happily skips off, leaving the gang back to square one, with no way into the party themselves. Just then, an Azumarill approaches the, deject the dejected group, with a balloon in hand, with the very same moons tied to it. Well, this is a nice surprise. Miel sent invitations to everybody. Azumarill just forgot to deliver them. Azumarill then makes to hand the balloon over. When the wind picks up and takes the package away, the balloon gets hooked on a pole hanging off a building in the distance. With no way to retrieve the invitations, the Pichu brothers start to tear up, until the older brother notices another balloon suspended in the air, which inspires him into a plan. The older brother explains the plan and the group splits to collect the needed items. Zumarill grabs a large basket while Teddy Ursa, Smoochum, and the Pichu brothers find a large star print cloth. 
Hooper and Azumarill tie the cloth to the ends of the basket, and Magby hops inside to add a fire under the now secured material. It's a Magby powered hot air balloon! This should do the trick! The Pichu brothers hop into the basket with Magby and begin towards the hook balloon to retrieve their tickets into the party. Too far left, then too far right. They're having trouble getting close enough to grab them. The moon carrying balloon is slipping off the pipe it's stuck on. Just as it gets free and begins to float away for good, the older brother barely grabs onto it, saving the day for everyone. Time passes. Meowth and his group are looking towards the sunset atop a large building. Well guys, said Meowth, the night I dreamed of is finally here. The party is here. The room is packed with all sorts of Pokemon, enjoying the buffer of food laid out for them. The Pichu gang enters and are blocked by the Squirtle squad. Presenting their invitations, the Squirtles quickly and harmoniously hop to the side to welcome them in. The group quickly runs for the food and begins to indulge themselves. For a while, it looked like they'd never make it, but the Pichu posse is in the house. Off in the corner of the room, Meowth and company peek into the main room to check on its guests. It looks like everybody's here, whispered Meowth. We better go check our instruments one more time and get warmed up for the big show. While the guests are still partaking in the feast, the speaker on the wall turns on. And Meowth is on. He begins speaking. Ahem. Could I have your attention, please? Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. And second of all, it's now time for the main event of the evening. The premiere performance of my new band, Meowth's Music Attack. So kindly make your way through the big doors and we'll start the show! Everyone in the main room begins to head through the now open doorway Meowth was referring to, excited to see what's to come. Meowth, watching the party goers heading in through a camera with Wobbuffet, turns to speak. So it looks like they're all ready to see the show. Hey, come on, we gotta get moving! And the two head for the stage to begin the performance. Grand unveiling of a stage where Meowth rises from the center to begin his song, Meowth's Party. Bumbling, bumbling, screwing up and stumbling. Looks like Team Rock gets blasting off again. We're always stinking, it got me to thinking. And now Meowth has got the perfect plan. I'll throw a party and mission will be free. It'll be a snap when they walk right in my trap. It's never been such fun stealing lots of Pokemon. Humans ain't invited cause I said so. Once they hit the dance floor, that's when they're done for. This is one scheme even we can't blow. Meowth, 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 this party is so exciting. It's gonna be the biggest bash of the year. Meowth, 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 won't you tell us who you're inviting? Anyone who's anyone is gonna be here. Meowth, 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 ooh, this party's not for fighting. Ice cream for everyone, there's nothing to fear. Go, cat, go! <laughs> hmm, hmm, at Mio's party, blast off at the speed of light for one night only, no Pokemon is lonely. At Mio's party, Team Rocket's not gonna fight, so move those feet to the sound of the beat. At Mio's party, don't tell the boss about tonight. I wish this party could go on forever. The party has ended, but not without a bang. Meowth and his crew take to the roof to set off a dangerously large amount of fireworks. Fire! Meowth shouts as Wobbuffet activates the detonator. The fireworks don't go off. Something's wrong, it ain't working. Meowth, irritated, begins to walk towards the unactivated fireworks. This burns me up. I pay good money for this stuff. Suddenly, in a brilliant flash of light, the fireworks launch with Meowth on them. I'm blasting off again! Ah! The fireworks are spectacular. The Pichu gang notices the brilliant lights and take a moment to enjoy the beautiful end to their incredibly hectic day. And that is in its entirety the Pichu Brothers animated special turned into a story and given described video so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that 
but this is where I'm going to end it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.